Happy San Herman. Yeah, yeah, Are yeah, you ready, yeah. Carmen? Okay. Are you ready? Thanks to Lorenzo from Top Artist Promotion <laughs> who give us the, this opportunity. Okay? We this is coming from From Zombie War. Zombie um, War. Tony Gonzalez from Main in Metal. Uh, Herman Lee from Dragon Force and Sam Todman from Dragon Force 2. Of right. course. So good morning <laughs> friends. How are you? Oh, not too bad, thanks. Yes, so yesterday it was a, no, last Saturday, last Saturday was the contest about the best guitar player. Did you find really a good guitar player in the contest? Yeah, there were some really good guitar players and the, the you know, we couldn't even decide who's going to win the guitar because it was a big prize. Yeah, well, we were arguing. I was like, this guy's the best. He's like, oh, are you sure? Maybe this one. And yeah. like, but like, there was actually a lot of really good players. Like, you know, so, they, they were all good in different ways. You know? Yeah. Like, so the winner deserved the guitar. Perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Carmen wants to ask you some question about the new CDs. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can you tell? Sí. Venís a presentar vuestro nuevo álbum, Máximo Overlock que nos narra un poquito en la portada, ya podemos ver reflejado la era de la tecnología que nos ha tocado vivir, todo mucho estrés, mucho, no, las pautas que nos marcan la sociedad, aparte de, ¿es lo que queréis reflejar a través de esta, de esta portada? No te preocupes, voy a traducir en inglés. Perfecto. Ella quiere saber sobre el cover. Okay, about the cover of the CD because uh, in the cover you can see the high state, the technology. The, in some part, I discovered that maybe there is a, the video games color. And uh, what do you want to reflect in the cover of the CD? Is it the crazy new world? Um, yeah, exactly. I think it's quite. You can, can quite obvious. You can see it's. We're sort of like just talking about how there's so much information coming from everywhere. Obviously, the internet mostly, and we're just kind of looking at the world to say like, you know, there's so much going on, but do we really need it all? You know, some some things are good. Maybe some things are bad. I think some. The problem we think for for music, maybe people don't take sometimes take as much time to appreciate it, you know, because they can always change to another CD. Everything's for free. There's, and, there's too much information, and people don't know how to process it. Yes, people don't know how to process. It. Yeah. Yes. On the other hand, let me tell you uh, something. I read that you have your own guitar, Ivanes STM San Todman signature model guitar, and you have your own guitar, Herman Lee uh, STM. Ivanes STM. What are the difference between both guitars? The instrument. Um, everything. Is much better. <laughs> everything. Yes. No, no. Obviously, yeah. My one looks cooler. <laughs> they're, they're very different guitars because even though we play in the same band, we play very differently. So, um, um, just a different style of guitar. I mean, how do I say? I'm not gonna say. Well, obviously, I'm saying my one's better. And he says his one's better because it's, they work both for us individually different. So, I think any fans should go and try them to see what they what they think is different about them. But yeah, yeah. Um, perfect. But for example, apart from the body, is there any difference in terms of the neck or the handbookings or? Everything about that, those two guitars different. The neck shape, the pickups, um, the different versatility and different tone. There's like this. This could be a whole interview if yeah. I start on. It. Yeah, you don't want to let him start talking about his guitar, or you like two hours later. Yeah, <laughs> I'll give you a lot of details on it. But yeah, they're, they're great in their own different ways. Yes. So you design it by according. Oh, they design it according to your own specification. Yeah, pretty much. No. Yeah, it's um, you know we pretty much say what we want, and we've been trying different prototypes along the way before we got to the final product. And there's some changes, you know, that went on quite a bit. That was that was like originally the first one. Perfect. So, Carmen. En este disco hemos podido observar que las texturas armónicas abundan mucho más que en anteriores discos de Dragon Force, aunque siempre mantiene la esencia de vuestro su riff de guitarra, el sonido característico de Dragon Force. Es cómo ha evolucionado este sonido en este sexto disco. Okay, uh, Carmen wants to know uh, because uh, Carmen see or uh, hear that in this CD he she found more harmonies than in the previous CDs. However, it's the same uh, Dragon Force rhythm and the same Dragon Force ways to uh, play. So, but what are the difference between this and the previous CDs? Um, I think it's 
it's just sort of we always every between each album you get more ideas you know you're exposed to more music yourself you you take your chase change a little bit so I mean it's not so different from the other CDs which is we don't want to make it too different you know I don't like bands to change too much myself anyway so it's, it's just kind of continuation and just sort of reflects how we are now in 2014 as a band you know like obviously now we've got the new singer which he's starting to feel more at home in the band um, yeah we just write the best songs we can at the time and hopefully other people like it too yes I know that you wrote uh, all the music no you and another the other guy yeah the bass player Fred yeah yes so but let me uh, when I read I have a question about it did you wrote the solo from Herman Lee no 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 we write each other solo yes. no, we write each the solo is what we always play ourselves yeah okay you tell him in this place there is your solo yeah no? perfect and what did you do you improvise or you wrote the solo uh, the way we, we actually uh, look at every single song to, to be able to decide who play what and what solo and all that because um, there's so many songs and so many different passages and we try to equal, equal out so everyone got to play it to a different kind of rhythm so it's not all everyone randomly decided but um, I improvise all my solos so just like all the other albums before just like the previous five albums actually you know, I always improvise my solos and Sam always work them out in advance yeah just different different approach again okay is uh, Carmen uh, time canciones de este disco tienen conexión en unas entre otras, es, puede decir que es un álbum conceptual o cantan cada una una historia distinta, aunque más o menos dentro de un mismo tema. Carmen wants to know if the, there is a concept album or there are different stories without connection between the others. Yeah, it's, each song has definitely got different topic for lyrics. Um, we get we kind of the, the cover of, of the album kind of we also as well as describing the information and everything today. It also maximum overdose kind of describing the music as a whole you know it's like saying because we always our albums always be very like over the top you know very over overloaded with guitar solo overloaded with everything really. so but i mean yeah each song definitely got a different topic lyrics Carmen, ¿verdad? Ahora es que me acuerdo que yo tenía que haberte traducido la respuesta. Sí, pero para traducir esto Mira, no Y estoy de lo más entusiasmado. Dice, eh, ay, no, dice Sam que no hay conexión entre las canciones, que cada canción toca un tópico distinto. En la anterior, que tú me habías hablado de las armonías, dice, había explicado que cada canción... O sea, la evolución es la evolución propia de lo que ellos van escuchando y de lo que ellos van viendo en cuanto a música y que por eso es que ha habido una evolución, pero que no ha habido una intención específica de hacer, de hacer ese, eh, ese tipo de sonido. Uh -huh. Y en cuanto a la primera pregunta que era la portada, dice que lo que quieren reflejar en la portada es que estamos en un mundo que tiene demasiada información uh -huh. y que sin embargo las personas no saben cómo procesar esa información. No da tiempo. No da tiempo, no, no tenemos tiempo para procesar esa información. Ahora, in terms of uh, information and news, I read that the most recent news about Dragon Ball is that you hired G and Salone from Kid Reaper. Yes, so what happened, man? What happened with the previous drummer? And why did you hire G and Salone? Well, um, you know, with, with Dave, he just want to, you know, not tour as much. You know, Dragon Ball's touring has been pretty brutal and he's been in the band for 10 years. And, and it's, you know, we talked about it and we, and that's the kind of solution we worked out. We're, we're happy for Dave to, you know, to be able to also try different kind of music. So that's no problem. And Dave actually knows G and Zalone himself. So he actually, under Dave recommended him too, to, to you know, take over. Him. So, um, we know, we know people, you know, you guys, you know, you, yeah, we, we've met him like a few times actually, and, like, and he's a really cool guy, and you know, like he was saying, you know, no, no problem with Dave, with good friends, and you know, he just wanted to try something, do something different, and um, yeah, we kind of looking at, it, we always look at a change, not as a bad thing, we look at it as a positive thing, like we, we think, well, when we saw G playing, we we're like, wow, this is so amazing, you know, like of course Dave's a really great drummer too, but it's just going to be, now it brings something different, and, and, and we're just like, we were so happy to see him play. We were just like, wow, we really, we're excited for other people to see him play too. 
Yes, but you didn't put any advertising because I would like to be a drummer from that Oh, okay, yeah, well, so, next time. <laughs> I'm too old to be a drummer. <laughs> yeah, why not? Because I listen to new songs and the drummer needs to eat a lot of uh, food yeah, oh, yes, uh, to for play sure. the drums. <laughs> okay. but yeah, well, I mean, it was kind of lucky because we already we saw him, because we know him as a friend before, and we saw him playing on the internet. He had some songs on his website. And even before we needed a drummer, we saw him, we were like, wow, this guy is amazing. You know, if we need a drummer, that's the one we want. And so, luckily, when we needed a new drummer, he was free. We said, quick, ring him now before someone else takes him. <laughs> okay, ¿sabes que tenemos un nuevo baterista acá? Sí, Se llama Ian Salone. Bueno, sí. le he preguntado cómo lo contrataron. Y eh, dice que, bueno, ya llevaban 10 años, el baterista anterior, como quiera que sea, uh -huh. necesitaba un cambio. Y ya ellos conocían a Ian Salone. Uh -huh. Y en ese momento estaba libre. Y fue una, sí, fue una muy buena suerte por parte del grupo. Entonces yo bromeaba y le decía que no habían puesto hablar ningún anuncio porque a mí me hubiera gustado hacer batería de Dragon Force. Pero que estaba viendo, eh, leyendo, o sea, escuchando el disco. Y realmente para hacer batería de Dragon Force hay que comer mucho. Porque sí, 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 mucho, mucho. Sí. Bien, entonces. Bueno. Aparte del nuevo baterista, bueno, Mark Hasson lleva ya ese segundo álbum. ¿Cómo le habéis visto esta evolución ya en este segundo disco que está junto a vosotros? Y bueno, aparte del baterista, creo que se ha adaptado bastante bien también estos nuevos miembros, pero no es solo los únicos cambios nuevos en Dragon Force, porque habéis grabado en los estudios de Suecia nuevos y con un productor nuevo. ¿Qué nos podéis contar al respecto de esto? Yes, I, I'm going to give you more details when I translate to English. She wants to know about the new producer, about the new musician, but for example, Gian Salone didn't play in the CD. No, no. El baterista nuevo no tocó en el CD. No, pero, pero para, de cara en los ensayos, para luego presentar el disco, ¿cómo le veis integrado en la banda? So, in the rehearsals or to present the CD about the future concert, how did you see Gian Salone? Did, did he really fit the position? Uh, if we if he didn't fit the position, we would have got him to play because um, you know we do take just like making an album, we take care of all the details to make sure we make the right decision and doing the right thing. Um, you know and. To be honest, it takes Guy about half a day to learn a song. But that's uh, not a long time. And he's got uh, really a lot of skills, different skills today. So they're equally good job in a different way. And, and it's, we know it's going to work because we've rehearsed with them. Well, they have. I was ill, so I didn't do it. <laughs> I was, I was watching. <laughs> I was sick, so I was, I was laying on the floor while they were playing. But um, yeah. Um, just depends feels, on to see the show. Yeah, it just, it just feels right, you know. We, we when we all tried a lot of drummers in the early days before Dave, and, and you know sometimes you you can have good drummers, but sometimes it just doesn't feel right, you know. And and with with Guy, we just we're just like we instantly go, yeah, this is definitely right. Yeah, just it just you can someone can play the same drum beat, and it's not the same thing, you know. Like so, it, but it, yeah, it just it felt really good. And yeah, we went out with him. We got drinking just to make sure make sure he's cool, you know. Know, like and, and everything, yeah. Like it just, it just feels really good, and we, we're excited for people to see him play. Ellos están muy contentos con el nuevo baterista. Dice que si, si realmente hubieran visto que no podía llenar la, el puesto, no lo hubieran tomado. Pero no solamente es un buen baterista, sino que además es una buena persona que se lleva bien y fue eh, capaz de aprenderse una canción del grupo en mediodía. Entonces, eh, con esos handicaps, además lo conocían previamente porque ya lo habían visto tocar en Kill Ritual, que era la banda donde venía. Y entonces eh, fue por esas razones por las que lo tomaron. En el caso de el nuevo trabajo ahora les voy a preguntar en inglés y te diré yes so you uh, choose a different studio and you choose a different producer for this cd but in this case why and the other question did Carl Bloom understand your decision well Carl Bloom was never a producer for us he was always an engineering producer which means he was you know helping us doing the sound but he wasn't making decisions and changing any songs so I Actually, we told Carl Cruz, you know, we're going to do this album somewhere else. Yeah, it's cool, no problem. Less heading this this summer. <laughs> well, yeah, he, Carl always told us making Dragon Force album is for him the most difficult album to make. Yeah, because so, there's so many things, so many bits and so many parts, and and we, everything have to be very, we're very, everything must be perfect. And, and Carl said, yeah, he was quite happy to have a break. And I mean, we we, it's quite possible we will 
work with him again. We don't know, but yeah, we always we don't have any bad thing to say about Carl or our old album. We really like them a lot, and so we never know. But we just thought it was time for a change. You know, you, so sometimes if you the, we were thinking about maybe work there again because you know obviously you have a very good result, but yeah, it's just like just need a change. Why not? And yeah. it's like a bit of a risk, but you know. we've we've produced all the previous albums, so we are. We've done a lot of production already, so it's good that we don't have to do it this time. Actually, it's kind of cool. You know, we can think about just playing our instruments instead of just sitting there on the computer listening to every single person and making sure everything's okay. So it's good that we've got someone else to do it on this album. Yes, but why James Booger? Uh, we thought about using him to mix the album back in 2008 for the Ultra Beatdown album, but it didn't happen because we didn't need to in the end. Um, he was just the first name that popped up when we decided we we're going to try getting a producer. You know, he's got good sounds, he made good out, great albums with other bands, that different style of music too, so it's also going to give it a fresh, fresh sound. We didn't want to get a producer who just work on power metal, we wanted something else. Yeah, and we just we just sort of thought, well, it's always a bit of a gamble. That was I was more worried than the other guys. I thought, you know, maybe it's not going to be as good as the other album, but you know, we listened to everything he did. We know he was good, and we could just kind of imagine that it will probably be a good result with us. So, and luckily, it was. Yeah, Sam didn't trust me that much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in choosing him. Yes. Oh, eh, Carmen, mucha información, mucha información para un solo para traducir así de pronto. Pero bueno, realmente ya ellos conocían el trabajo de James Bogren previamente porque en el pasado hablaron con él para que les mezclara un disco, pero al final no logró ser. Entonces, en el caso de a ver de quién estábamos hablando, de Carl Grun, que es con quien habían hecho todos los discos. Carl Grun realmente ha entendido la decisión y no está descartado que en el futuro vuelvan a trabajar con Carl Grun. Bien, si tienes otra pregunta, venga. Sí, vais a sacar una edición especial que va a formar cinco temas. Eh, breve, eh, ¿qué nos vamos a encontrar en estos cinco temas? ¿Qué nos vais a presentar en esa edición especial? Cuéntame, ¿hay una edición especial con cinco temas además de los que ya hay? En su página web. Ah, pues ah, ya, que... esa parte que... <laughs> ok, so, uh, are you going to release an special edition with five, five extra tracks? Yeah, what, that's what right. What have you found in those five extra tracks? Well, those, those tracks may be called bonus tracks, but they were not... You know, we recorded, um, you know, those songs to be as good for the album. Yeah, so, we, we, we always sort of, we don't, we don't say, let's record 10 songs and then five, like, not so good songs. We say, let's record 15 songs that we are, all think are equally good. And then, then we just decide which ones is best for the album. Because, I mean, most people, I think, are probably going to get special edition anyway, because there's two. Yeah. Can, so, like... We, we really think we don't think it's like five crappy songs. You know, yeah, so there's really like good. there's like another there's actually a ballad. There's a ballad. There's a more kind of a mid-tempo epic kind of song, and there's a kind of a melodic kind of slower song, melodic metal, and there's an instrumental track and one old song that was written a long time ago. Yeah. Okay, eh, ellos han estos cinco temas no son bonus track como tal, son es que ellos grabaron 15 eh, canciones para el disco y eh, van a sacar la edición de 10 y en la edición especial van eh, cinco estos cinco temas donde podemos encontrar un medio tiempo, una balada, un tema eh, épico como otros que hay en el disco y eh, realmente es para que los que quieran la edición especial tengan algo realmente especial, no un relleno. ¿Sí? Es la edición. Uh, so, but it's the first time you play a cover version, and the cover is Johnny Cash, Ring of Fire. Yeah. So, why did you decide to play the song? Um, well, we just, we, since we started the band, we always said we never want to play a cover, because we just thought, well, it's not really, we thought everyone plays covers, we don't, we think it's not, we just don't want to, you know, and we're like, happy to play our own songs. Um, and then after five albums now, now we have done five albums, we thought, well, actually for us to do a cover, is interesting and quite original because we never did it before. No one heard us play another song except for our own. So yeah, we thought maybe the time is right now, and, and we uh, we just chose that one because we we all thought, tried to think of some songs. Each person in the band come with three songs, and, and then we just imagine. I, for me, I was like the one that thought of this Johnny Cash. Cause I, I heard it on TV or something one day. It was just by chance, and I, and I couldn't hear the vocal melodies and the chords progression, and I could imagine that fast and in Dragon Force style. So it was just kind of by chance, I guess, we thought I'd try that and it 
and it works. So I think it's cool. Okay, ellos hicieron una versión de la canción mm. de Johnny Cash y les cogió porque una vez lo escuchó por televisión y se quedó pensando eh, cómo sonaría esto realmente con el sonido de Dragon Force, con la fuerza de Dragon Force, pero ellos habían pensado que nunca iban a hacer una versión y ahora lo sé. So, eh, could we expect another version in the future? Maybe. I, I... Really hard to say than writing your own songs too. So like, why not? Maybe a whole album of covers <laughs> <laughs> if we're lazy. Yes, and uh, uh, maybe so crazy as Johnny Cash. Yeah, in, I mean, in Dragon Force rhythm. Well, that's exactly that's what I thought that the idea behind that was to play something that is very obviously Dragon Force. We want it to be a song that, even if you don't know the original or even if you don't like the original, we want people that like us to think that's a good, which is why it's on the album, it's not a bonus track or something. So, you know, we want people to enjoy it like the rest of the album, which is, you know, and it's not, it sounds obviously very different to the original, so, you know, hopefully they do. Yes, maybe, maybe Sgt. Pepper in Dragon Force uh, style. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or something like exactly. that. Yeah, why not? Or, or if, yes, or maybe a weird than, than this. Yeah. Okay. So, coming, a ver. Venga. Yo quería preguntarle sobre la versión de Johnny Cash también que habían hecho, que habían, porque son sonidos eso, tan dispares, creo que han comentado un poquito, pero quería saber cómo ha sido el proceso de adaptación eso, de estos sonidos tan dispares que no tienen nada que ver con el sonido de Dragon Force. ¿Cómo ha sido el proceso de realizar esta, esta versión? Yes, he wants to know a little more about the, the song of Johnny Cash. How was the process when you uh, decided to change that song into a Dragon Force style? Well, yeah, like I was saying before, we knew that we wanted it to be a fast song. We thought, well, if we're going to play a cover, because Dragon Force is known for our fast songs, you know, probably 80%, 90% of our songs are fast. So we said, you know, let's make it a fast cover. So that was the first thing. So when I'm listening to a song, the covers that people suggested, I was thinking, well, that one can be fast because the rhythm of the vocals, the speed of the vocals from the original will work with a fast drum beat. So, um, and then after that, so I just start with the chorus and then I make some demos and, and just, it came very easily actually. Like, and then, you know, the, the, once you finish the chorus, then I thought, okay, that's work backwards. And then, you know, the verse, yeah, it's, it just kind of happened. <laughs> Bueno, dice que solo pasó, que realmente no fue muy difícil, que eh, como Dragon Force es conocido por hacer las canciones rápidas, porque la mayoría de las canciones de Dragon Force son rápidas, realmente él siempre pensó en hacer una canción rápida. Y que realmente, bueno, cómo adaptar la letra a esta velocidad fue fácil, fue pasando poco a poco, fue muy fácil en este sentido. A ver, ¿alguna otra, Carmen? Sí, hay una colaboración en el disco con el vocalista de Trivium, con Matt Fifi, eh, ¿Cómo ha sido trabajar con, con él? Porque bueno, tenéis muy buena relación con Trivium, pero ¿cómo ha sido el proceso de, de la grabación junto, junto a Trivium? Ok, yeah, she wants to know how was the process with Matt Hefley from Trivium and why did you decide to invite him for this CD? In my case, let me tell you that you got right. Okay, I'm a really fan of Trivium and consider that even when Trivium and Dragon Force are different bands and even different styles, they have something in common. Mm. Okay, and there is a, a, the, sense of, uh, the sense of happiness, the sense of a speed, the sense of a, some kind of a, a aggressive song. Okay, but in this case, when I read that you invite him, I wasn't surprised. But tell me, how was, how did you invite him? How was the process? Uh, well, we know, we know Trivium guys for for a number of years because we're two together and we have, a, you know, we have the same interests in different things. Like Fred talked to him and you know we talked to him. I talked to him about martial arts. And, you know, and then when we had um, the songs almost finished and we could hear, you know, that we listened to the songs and we thought, oh, some of these songs needed something. A little, like, maybe some low backing vocals and some screaming, black metal, death metal screaming. And we just thought, hey, maybe Matt, Matt, Matt Heathy, Matt would be a good, you would have the right voice to kind of add to the song. And so um, Fred contacted him and then he just said, yeah, I'll do it, you know, when he had some time off tour. Um, so we sent him the songs and it took two days, it all came back and you know, when I first heard it, I just told him, wow, this is amazing, you gotta come and listen to this, mm. you know, and it, it sounded really good and he did more than we asked him to do. So he had harmonies, different death metal, black metal, his own shouts to the song and 
it, can, it really shows on like the game, for example, which would be the, the first video of the game. And on no more defenders, you can really hear the shouting and different kind of different voices Max can do and kind of compliments those songs that really fit it. <laughs> so, eh, Carmen, eh, nada, la tenían casi compuesta la canción y entonces pensaron que esta canción necesitaba algo más, ¿no? Necesitaba un, un tipo de canto en estilo de metal, de voz gutural. Pensaron, ¿por qué no Max? Si nosotros somos amigos y nos conocemos de hace tiempo. Hablaron con él, le enviaron la canción y cuando recibieron la canción de vuelta él había hecho mucho más de lo que habían esperado y realmente es una magnífica canción y yo pienso que, que sí realmente mm -hmm. la gente de Trivium Trivium es una banda espectacular mm -hmm. eso sí estamos, no, de acuerdo. estamos de acuerdo ¿no? tenías alguna otra pregunta a ver por dónde vamos sí bueno quería preguntarles ahora un poquito sobre el otro día que estuvieron aquí en la Wii Rock viendo de jurado en el concurso de guitarras y a mí los anécdotas de hacer de jurado la primera vez que estabais en un concurso así cómo ha sido la experiencia Okay, he wants to know is this the first time that you are in a contest as a jury and how was the experience? Uh, I can't remember. I think for me it was the first time, no? Yeah, for you it is. Yeah, yeah, for me it was the first time, but he's done it like several times, I think. Yeah, I've yes, done it several times several in, time? Amer in America. I've done it with like George Lynn, Jenny Timmons, and John Five, and I've done it with um, Steve Stevens and <laughs> all kind of other yeah. positions arguing. So it was his first time, yeah. Yeah, I thought it was fun actually. I thought it was really cool. Like, well, we were scared, but no one went into it. We were like, oh, maybe what happens if they're all bad? But actually, they were all really good. And yeah, you know, it was like hard to decide, in fact. So yeah, it was a good time. Perfect. So uh, let me ask you a question. Uh, Sunday, some years ago, I saw a picture of uh, Keith Richard from Rolling Stone, and I saw his hands. And when I saw his finger, I said, he's really a guitar player. But it's a long years uh, playing the guitar, and uh, their fingers are really different. How, how about your fingers, man? Because you are really, are your fingers are still in good the shape? The same, really. Actually, it's funny because when I first started, when I was like 15, 16, I started playing electric guitar, and you always get some blisters here. Yes. So actually now it's gone, like, so maybe I should be practicing more, or maybe they got tougher or something. But no, I've, I've got very uh, ladies' hands. I'd never do any hard work. <laughs> yes, and maybe, what about you, Lee? Oh, that's the smart. Is your finger got, really good? I have incredible chat, chat up lines with about my oh, the quality of my hand, how beautiful <laughs> it is, and how how in how smooth it is. So, yeah. <laughs> yes, perfect. That I want to ask you something more about uh, guitar players, but uh, first I give you an opportunity to come because we decided to do one question in Spanish, one in English, and I translate. Tell me. Bueno, pues ya el tiempo se nos va acabando, nos están diciendo. Entonces, lo que quiero es daros las gracias por estar con nosotros este ratito, por venir hasta aquí. Y nada, que aquí tenéis las cámaras, pues despediros y decir lo que queráis a vuestros fans para que vayan a veros y vuestras próxima, en vuestro próximo tour. Yes, uh, they are telling us that this is a final question, maybe, and Carmen wants to know if you want to say something to uh, uh, your fans or something special, but in my case, I want to add something. You are sure that you are uh, between the faster guitar players around the world, but tell me the truth. Are you the fastest guitar players? Of course not. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Definitely not, and we never will be, and never been the fastest around. From, you know. No, I mean, there's so many good guitar players in the world, and we, we don't want to, like, have a big head and say we're the best, you know, because there's, like, there's always someone better than you. Uh, maybe if you're Steve Vai, you can say I'm the best, but like not yes. us. <laughs> yes, definitely not us. Yes, yeah. you, you consider the same because you were working with the Steve Vai. Yeah, but I'm 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 just a beginner. So compared to those guys, Steve Vai, oh. Satriani, I'm just a beginner. I was just a lucky kid to get to play with those guys. Okay, yeah. did you tell something to the Spanish fans or the fans around the world? Is it from Made in Metal and from? Uh, Zombie war. Zombie war. Zombie war. Zombie war management. So, My wife. Yeah. So, uh, well, we hope to see um, all the fans in in Spain later in the year when we come, um, hopefully, for tour, play some shows, hope to see them and meet them again. Yeah, we always have fun with fans in Spain because they like to party and they're always very happy. And, 
is to you know to be at the show. Yeah, yeah. No, we, we really love coming here. I mean, it's like nice day, sun's shining. It's like England's probably raining, and and everyone here is always like really good fun. Yeah, like you said, we yeah, always like, have we always have a good time in Spain, and we hope we hope they like the album, and and we can't wait to play some songs for you. Yeah. Yes. Let me tell you that I am Cuban, and in Cuba you have a lot of followers. Uh, and a lot of people who follow you. So oh, okay. uh, it was a nice interview. I'm glad to meet you. Mm, really you. glad. And this is all for today. Gracias. I right. would like to see you. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Goodbye. Muchas gracias. Bye. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, cool, man. Eh? Are you from Cuba then? So